So I have a question for you. Who can take the sunrise, sprinkle it with dew, cover it with chocolate, or a miracle or two? The candy man? Welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels with your hosts, Sean and Marianne Gaunt. <laughs> well, hello, pair of peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. And I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. Today, we are talking about not just a single location, but an entire town. The town of Hershey, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Because the whole town not only smells good like chocolate... <laughs> The whole town has paranormal claims. And was made by the Candyman. That's right. That's right. We don't have a Panic D number for this location yet because it's not in the database yet. However, it's going to be added. Okay. Um, and then once we do so, we'll link to all the videos and stuff that we're doing. However, we did visit Hershey, Pennsylvania, July 1st of 2015. And that was during our trip when we went to Gettysburg and went to Hershey and to Philadelphia and all, all kinds. What, did, all what kinds day of did you say? July 1st, 2015. It was our anniversary. We went to the Hershey, the sweetest place on earth, on for our, our anniversary. anniversary. Yeah, we did. Aww. Yeah, we did. You didn't even know it was 2015. No, I didn't. <laughs> all right, before we go any further, let's talk about some history of the man that created this town, Milton S. Hershey. And a little bit about the town that he created. And a little bit about the town itself. So watch this video and we will be back and talk about our experiences and why we think that the whole town is haunted. So watch it. We'll be right back. Milton Hershey was born in an area called Derry Church, which would eventually become known as the sweetest place on earth, Hershey, Pennsylvania. Milton Hershey purchased about 1,200 acres of land in the area and turned it into a thriving town that was built on Hershey's chocolate. He wanted to build a large factory and a town for his employees that was similar to the coal mining towns of the day, but better of course. He added a library, post office, houses with electricity and indoor plumbing, a bank, parks and schools, he even added a zoo and a trolley line that led to the factory. Before breaking ground on his famous chocolate factory in 1903, Milton S. Hershey had planned out the entire layout of his town, even down to the detail of naming every street. The factory was built on a six acre plot in a cornfield and officially went into operation in the winter of 1904. Also, in 1904, when he petitioned to open a post office with the United States Postal Services, it was required that they had a name of a town. So, they had a contest to name it. The winning name was Hershey Coco. The post office said, that sounded like a product, not a town. And the name was eventually shortened to Hershey. The new name was officially adopted in 1906. The zoo and bank were opened in 1905. The zoo's first residents were 12 prairie dogs, but eventually had many other animals such as monkeys. The zoo eventually closed and was incorporated later into Hershey's Park. Today, it is called Zoo America. It officially opened in 1978. It features more than 200 animals that represent 70 different species from five geographical areas across North America. In 1907, he opened a park for his workers and other residents. Today, it's a park that's enjoyed by the masses called Hershey Park. The park had free admission until 1971 when it was finally fenced in and turned into an official public amusement park which charged admission. Also in 1907, Hershey introduced a new product for Hershey, the Hershey's Kiss. 
These were all hand wrapped in eye catching silver foil and they were hand wrapped until 1921. After the automation of the wrapping process, Hershey's mother continued to hand wrap a box every day and gave them out to visitors of the town of Hershey. In 1909, Hershey opened the Hershey Industrial School for Orphans and Boys, as he wanted the boys in his town to have a good education to prepare them for jobs in factories and stores. And he and his wife couldn't have children of their own due to her illnesses. For this venture, Hershey deeded 486 acres of farming land to the Hershey Trust Company for the construction of a school for orphaned boys. Upon graduation, he sent each student into the world with $100, the same amount he started with. In 1918, Milton Hershey transferred all of his stock in the Hershey Chocolate Factory to the school through the Hershey Trust. The only rule he stipulated was that the gift was to be used for the students and the school. Once a year, he would have everyone from the school to his home, which he called High Point, for breakfast. And beginning in 1930, he would have a homecoming picnic for all the former students of the school. Hershey essentially replicated Hershey, Pennsylvania in Cuba, beginning in 1916 when he purchased land and sugarcane farms, and then built a sugar processing plant to convert sugarcane to sugar for his chocolate. He named the town in Cuba Central Hershey. Mr. Hershey eventually purchased Central Rosario in 1920, Central Carmen and Central San Antonio in 1925, and Central Jesus Maria in 1927. The Hershey Cuban holdings included 60,000 acres, five raw sugar mills, a peanut oil plant, an agave plant species plant, four electric plants, and a standard gauge railroad with 251 miles of track. At Central Rosario, Hershey founded, you guessed it, an orphan school, which was there known as the Hershey Agricultural School. He also built housing for his workforce, shops, a hotel, parks, and gardens. Now this Cuban adventure turned out to be very important during the 1920s and 30s because it allowed him to maintain his chocolate factory during the hardships of the Depression and World War and keep his candy bar price at the five cent price that it always had been. Hershey's Chocolate finally did discontinue its five cent bar on November 24th of 1969. Hershey's new price was then a 10 cent bar which, by the way, weighed more than twice as much as the old five cent bar. In any case, the Cuban adventure allowed him to make sure that everyone in his factories in Pennsylvania kept working too. And he helped out others in his town of Hershey as he hired them for other jobs, like building a community center, a luxury hotel that's today the Hotel Hershey, and a sports arena for a hockey team, which today has the Hershey Bears. In 1930, Milton gave his home, High Point, to the town. It became a clubhouse for the Hershey Country Club, and he then maintained the upper floors for a place for him to stay until his death. In 1935, he gave each of the five churches in Hershey a gift of $20,000, this gift helped many of the churches pay off debts that they had incurred during the Depression. On October 13th of 1945, Milton Hershey died at 10 o'clock in the morning at the Hershey Hospital. The community of Hershey came to a standstill. And on October 16th of 1945, Milton Hershey's body laid in state in the foyer of the Hershey Industrial School, which allowed a steady stream of townspeople to honor the man and his memory. His funeral service was held in the auditorium of the school and had all of the clergy from the Hershey churches in attendance. 
eight of the boys from the Hershey Industrial School's senior class were chosen to be his pallbearers. In 1951, the school officially changed its name to the Milton Hershey School. Due to its prosperity, the school built the Penn State Hershey Medical Center Hospital in 1963. And to this day, the school faces one major issue that they have to deal with on an annual basis. Where and how to spend their large endowment, which now is almost twice as much as MIT and Harvard University. You see, since Milton donated all of his shares of the Hershey Chocolate Company to the school, each year the school receives very large dividends from the sales of each individual candy bar. So how did this chocolate adventure begin? Well, not with chocolate at all. At age 15, Milton apprenticed with Joseph H. Royer, a confectioner in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Hershey worked at Joe Royer's Ice Cream Parlor and Garden, where he learned the trade of candy making. By age 19, he had opened his own candy business in Philadelphia with financial backing from his mother and his aunt. He sold caramels, nuts, cookies, other confections. He was unable, however, to make this business profitable, and after six years, he returned to Lancaster. Over time, he apprenticed under a caramel confectioner in Denver and made several more attempts at his candy-making enterprises. But it wasn't until a candy importer from England asked him to make a huge order of what he was calling his Crystal A Caramels to sell that his company really became profitable. Then, he attended the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, where he encountered a German company named the J.M. Lehman Company and purchased the entire setup of machinery for making chocolate, from bean roasting all the way through the making of the chocolate itself. He set this up in the corner of his caramel factory and began testing and modifying the chocolate recipe until he had one that he thought was much better tasting than the German version. He called this little area in the Carmel factory the Hershey Chocolate Company. Eventually, by 1900, he decided caramels were a fad, but chocolate would be forever. So he sold his Carmel Company to his competitor, the American Carmel Company, for a cool $1 million. He, however, did, in this transaction, retain the rights to his chocolate recipes and his equipment, the hallmark of his chocolate empire. All right, some interesting stuff about the town of Hershey and Milton Hershey and the school and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I find it interesting that a portion of every Hershey candy bar goes to the education of those those children. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. That's very cool. You guys probably didn't even know that. You buy a Hershey bar and you're educating a child. That's right. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's amazing that he just gave all his shares of just his handed them own over. company yeah. for the education of others. Handed them right on over. Yeah. So let's talk about our experiences a little bit. Uh, we were in Hershey. It was kind of like a... I don't know, like a stop through mm -hmm. type thing. It was like, okay, we're going to be by it, might as well go. Yeah. You know, we didn't even know that it, it had paranormal claims actually until recently. Right. Uh, when we started looking stuff up and went, really? Mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely, I keep, we keep saying we're going back, but we go to Gettysburg all the time <laughs> and it's like really yeah, close. Yeah, it's pretty so much. Yeah. We're going to go back and hit some of the locations individually. But um, our experiences when we were there were actually kind of, kind of cool. Well, yeah, kind of cool and kind of a little expensive a little bit at the same time. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we went to the Chocolate World Yes. when we were there. And yeah. we took the tour of the town, the trolley tour, mm -hmm. and went to the different places. That too. was pretty fun. Yeah, that and you get, cool. like, candy all over the place. Oh, yeah, free candy. Man. They <laughs> yeah. just kept throwing it at you. But, yeah, lots of, lots of Hershey <laughs> kisses. Yeah. Um, and then at the Chocolate World, we actually made a, our own... Um, 
our own candy bar. Custom candy bar. Mm. And we're going to do a video about that and put it out for our Patreon. Uh, supporters can actually see the us making the, the custom candy bar. But I, I have to bring up the story about my clothing. Okay, go ahead, sweetheart. <laughs> I have to tell that story as part of our experience. <laughs> that's you the know, biggest experience yeah, you had there. Yeah, that's the expensive part. <laughs> so, like, as, as you guys know, and you've seen me in a couple of videos, and we're going to do a live stream, and you'll see I have a Reese Cup shirt, and I have a Reese hat. I have a lot of Hershey t-shirts and merchandise. <laughs> There's a reason behind that. Uh, number one, I have a tendency in public to make a fool of myself <laughs> and my wife, okay, just to have fun and yes, get people's himself. reactions. <laughs> but as you guys know, at one time, I was a very large fellow, very large, okay, and I was large at the time we were at <laughs> the Hershey's Chocolate World. The whole town smells like chocolate, okay? <laughs> so... In their gift shop, which is pretty amazing, the stuff you get. I mean, they have, yeah, it's it's ginormous. They have everything, you know, Hershey bar T-shirts and Reese cup T-shirts and hats and all, all kinds of stuff. Jewelry, giant size candies. Yeah, yes. it's it's everything. almost like the Disney of chocolate or something, you know. It, but anyways, yeah. I'm walking around. I'm looking at all these T-shirts because that's what I normally buy when we travel. That's something for me. Yes, it is. <clears throat> and I'm looking around, and there's nothing. In my size, big boy <laughs> size, okay. So, I found this awesome shirt I liked, you know, it had, because yeah. it, it was right around the 4th of July. And I'm like, oh, look, the Hershey Kisses are decorated, you know. And I was like, no, I won't get it because he's not getting this shirt, you know. Yeah. How bad. So, <laughs> so very loudly to my wife, I said, I can't believe this place. It's a town made of chocolate, and they have all these small people sizes. Don't they understand that us big people are going to be here buying shirts? You know, I, I was I was joking, <laughs> but a manager heard me. <laughs> so she starts bringing me all these shirts in my size. Oh, well, here's one. It's a Reese cup, and here's one that's this, and here's one that's this. And I, like, felt bad, so I ended up buying them all. Yes, yes, he did. So he has a whole collection of Hershey shirts. Yeah, so they hide the big size. Now, let's, let's just call it what it is, folks. <laughs> big people would definitely go there. Why do they hide their shirts? <laughs> So we're going to chalk that up to our experience at, at Hershey. But we had a good time there. Yeah, absolutely. I really yeah. liked the, the whole candy making process uh, where we got to make our own bar. That was pretty cool. There's a ride that you could go on that goes through the history of like chocolate. And when you're done, you get a free candy bar. I think we wrote it about three or four times. Yeah, and it, <laughs> you get it's, free. Yeah, it's not. Here, it, take whatever you want. Okay, we're going to get back on again. Yeah, it's not long. No. Uh, and, and it's pretty easy to get on. I mean, it's a it's a continuous moving conveyor belt, yeah. kind of like the chocolate factory, uh, and you have to kind of like hop on <laughs> as it's going. But uh, it's pretty it's pretty fun. Yeah, and at the end you get like a you know little candy bar. Like, yeah, there and, wasn't a, a weight. And so different times, I wrote it three times. Yeah, and different times you come out, they have different candy bars oh, yeah. because it's hey whatever came off the line last, you know, kind of goes goes there. So we got Reese Cup, we got Kit Kat. <laughs> like, That's a place too where we got hooked up. Like when we do our murder mystery dinners, like one of the favors or part of the favor that you get has Hershey Kisses in it. Mm -hmm. And we found out while we were there, you can actually buy them directly from them, like in a 50 pound box. And it's like way cheaper. I don't know that it's 50 pounds. I think they're 10 pounds, but it's okay. No, I, okay, maybe they're 10 pounds. <laughs> They're a huge box. It's a, I thought it's it was a pretty, 50 pounds. It's, I don't know. Is it really 50 pounds? I don't think it was 50 <laughs> pounds. Oh, they're huge. <laughs> but it's a lot of Hershey Kisses. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Bulk. Yeah. Hershey Bulk Kisses. Hershey you Kisses. Direct from, from the factory. Yeah. Uh, so why do you think that the, the town has paranormal? Well, There's most a lot of, of the, interesting things at the theater. Yeah, but. most of the paranormal claims revolve around Milton Hershey. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much, he loved that town. He built that town right down to naming those streets himself. Mm -hmm. He wanted that town to be prosperous. He did everything for those people in the town. He really wanted to make everybody feel at home and everything. And he just 
liked it there. I mean, he did spend some time away when he went to Cuba after his uh, wife died. You know, he kind of stayed away from his high point home uh, because of probably memories and things like that. But um, he just, he loved that place and he built it from the ground up. So uh, if there is the potential of coming back, right, definitely would make sense. Mm -hmm. He would come back there. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, and there's another thing, too, I found out through Twitter, through a friend of ours, Michael T. Panetta, who actually lives in Hershey, mm -hmm. and his wife works for the Hershey Company. Really? Um, there was something about a cemetery that they found when they were building the town that was, like, a forgotten cemetery. Ooh. And they redid it and, you know, brought it back, but it was like an abandoned cemetery, hmm. which is kind of interesting. Yes. He's going to be giving me some more information about that. I don't know all the details right now, but that That's pretty could cool. explain some of the right. activity. Yeah. So, pretty interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely a fun place to go. I mean, whether you're in the paranormal or chocolate or there's amusement park or... The zoo. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty. Okay. Well, is there anything else you would like to add to this video, my dear? They have a hockey team, too. Oh, I forgot about the hockey team. Go ahead. Yeah. So they have a hockey team, the Hershey Bears. And I was trying to do a little bit of research as to, you know, why they're called the Hershey Bears. Because, you know, I mean, like, bears and... Pennsylvania like it just doesn't make really make sense but um, originally Hershey uh, established it as the Hershey Hockey Club uh, to manage pro hockey teams in Hershey but um, I think that maybe and I this is totally me I have to do more research but I think maybe it might be because of his Hershey bar labels back in like 1906 his Hershey bars literally on the back of it were indicating a picture that um, to know that this was a genuine Hershey bar it would bear his name and so it, uh, it literally said it will bear the name Hershey and it had Hershey's signature on every single one of those wrappers so I wonder if it's because Hershey bear bear the name of Hershey. I don't know. Well, like always, <laughs> folks, uh, if you know anything more about Hershey or anything like that, leave it down in mm -hmm. the comments. Also, this is going to come out out of order. We're actually going to do another live stream after this comes out, so it's kind of a little messed up, but I'm going to go back. What we do on our location videos is link all the other related videos to the location. Mm -hmm. So those will be down in the, the description and in the cards and things like that. So, yeah. Neat stuff. Hey, until next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting.